This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Up here in the attic. Calm it, it went up. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Calm it. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, you used to get uh, our old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. Our show's must have been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, Ooh, what's, what's that? that? Oh, it's called ECR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the com net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <coughs> come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Smidbar, along with Wilbur Neal and Marty Wiley, and we're here to talk about 60s and 70s television. And before we get into the big uh, extravaganza tonight, just want to tell you we're on Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV, K-Book 21. Are they still using that? <laughs> um, probably. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> anyway. Like Caucasians singing yeah. the... Uh... Yeah. Theme, yeah. <laughs> and if you want to write to us and tell us stop singing, our, uh, <laughs> our address is Vast Wasteland. Vast Box Wasteland. 15, 14, 11. 15, 14, 11. Columbus, Ohio, 432, Columbus, Ohio, 432 Yeah. <laughs> so uh, just write in, and uh, since the, uh, the old Vast w Wasteland mailbag seems to be emptying out a little bit, we really need to see some people start to write in. That's true. I got a letter here. No, I didn't, because no. they didn't write. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And uh, also, uh, this really won't affect you viewers at all, because uh, we're, we're uh, shooting this show a little bit ahead. In fact, uh, the, what you're seeing uh, tonight was taped on September 17th, and you're going to see it, oh, it looks like uh, mid-November. So... <laughs> But ACTV is getting brand new equipment, so we're going to be off the air for a few weeks. But it won't affect you because, because we care about you as a viewer. So we've shot shows in advance, so you won't even see a difference. Except 
you won't see the lousy Chiron titles again. Yeah, so the next, the next we time you see us, we'll all have gray hair or something. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be <laughs> months <me>. ahead. <laughs> so there you go. Anyways, on to the night show. Uh, certainly uh, one of the biggest things in television, especially early television, was uh, the recreation of something that, that was already, already out existed. there because it was cheap to do and you really didn't have to pay writers to bring up original concepts. You just took something from another medium and went, oh, that works. Transplant the characters over here, you know, and you can screw around with it if you want or not. And it's a cheap show to do. <laughs> they don't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Walt Disney, I don't think they ever had an original concept. Yeah. <laughs> they just take everything. But who? Ho. What do you mean? They have excellent casting, like, uh, you know, Mickey playing Bob Cratchit. Whoa. What an actor there. <laughs> well, that's the idea that they, they never really, um, they always took a, something that existed and they just put it into uh, their, their own um, animated form or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about uh, comic strip shows. Uh, not not comic strip, strip shows. shows. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. No, not comic a... stripping. Oh, no, <laughs> or or not uh, wacky stand-up comedy shows like you what see the dozens of those the road today. To get to the other it's side. Uh. <laughs> no, we're talking about the stuff you see in the funny papers. The funny papers. That should probably be what this is yeah. called. Funny. Well, we... funny paper shows. <laughs> no, <laughs> there'd be shows about funny about papers that are funny. No. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Funny paper. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not that either. It's, you uh, guys are really grasping this time. Yeah, you we are. You're really reaching. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you look at the idea of comics. It's um, not only your your superhero things, but um, the the funny things, which is where people got the idea of funny, funny books. Page. Oh, I always had to get after people for <laughs> saying the funny book thing because it's. I mean, comics are comics. It's not just funny things. There's some serious stuff. Yeah. There's action things. There's all okay. kinds of things. So it's comics. It's not funny books but yet you'll still have your old your older people I remember buying funny, funny books, books. you're reading them funny <laughs> books <laughs> I used to have funny, funny books, books. pay a nickel and go to the store you could buy ten of them for a nickel, <laughs> nickel. funny books <laughs> uh, no they're comics okay it, it's comics there's a difference and then for you collectors it's comics <laughs> no, no, if you're, if you're collectors, it's graphic novels. <laughs> if you're collectors, it's, it's bunches and bunches of money. That's what it is. It's bunches and bunches of money. Mo but money, mo money, mo money. Mo money. money. <laughs> and then so. <laughs> so, let's, let's, uh, let's just jump right in here, that's shall right. we? And the first one, uh, alphabetically, because that's the way we're going to do it. That's the way the book <laughs> says it. <laughs> yes. Wait, what shows first? Well, Can actually... I could go with, um, even though we, we're, we're going to do a show actually on this, I can mention it here because... Um, well, mention oh, it. Go ahead. Okay, Chaz Adams worked for New Yorker magazine, and he um, came up with this concept of a, a family. It was called the, the Adams true. Family. That's they right. And he had strip. just, they weren't necessarily a strip thing, but they were just one-shots of this, this weird family. Well, I think <laughs> those count. <laughs> and, so, um, and you saw more Uncle Fester in the... Uh, in, in the comics than anybody else. <laughs> it was just this weird, bald guy looking over things with this maniacal yeah, he, look. He, he would look over things. Or, <laughs> he had this, this tall Fester. guy with the, with the bags under his eyes. That's your lurch character. Right. And your, uh, your, your, just, just your, your Gomez but character. We're going to talk uh, more Fresh. about Adam's family and also the Monsters on uh, our next exciting episode of Ass Wasteland. So this it's is our, true. So we can mention them. Yeah, here, but we're not going to go much into them. the Adam's family don't think about as being a... Right, but it is. Comic strip. Technically, it is. Technically, that's right. it is, yeah. It did come came from out of these comic strips. It's true. It's true. Let's just move did right along Did they ever do here. a show of Blondie and Dogwood? Oh, they yes, sure did. I know there's many, many more. We're, we're going to talk about them also. <laughs> here. We, Let's we go to that, that right now. Oh, that's B. That's B. Okay. Adams. B. Blondie. <laughs> Adams. Blondie. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I know I saw the... I remember seeing the movie short thing. Well, actually, those were done for television. Those were actually done for those TV. Those were okay. done for television right. with Arthur Lake and Pamela Britton. Arthur Lake playing Blank, <laughs> Blank Dagwood. I knew I was going to do no, that. No, no, I, I knew I was going to do that. that. I'm thinking Penny Singleton. Mm, Penny Singleton? Wasn't we don't even have a Penny Singleton show. No, no, no. What's her name? She does Jane's voice, but she was also Blondie in, in some of the Blondie Oh, shorts. I know who you meant. You know who I mean. Isn't it single Penny? 
Well, uh, I think she did her on radio. Well, she's got some name. Well, she she did her in the movies, and she did Jane's voice on the Jetsons. Well, actual, I know this stuff from something. <laughs> for the for the TV show, well, for the first ep, the first incarnation incarnation. There's a good word. Yeah. Incarnation of the TV show, which was actually done in the 50s, by the way. Um, it was um, Pamela Britton that was Blondie. But anyway, um, <clears throat> it's your, your Blondie and Dagwood thing. Blond, um, Blondie was, what was she? She was like a... Housewife. Well, I mean, she, she had a... She was like a singer or something for a while there, and then she married Dagwood. I think she was Dagwood. just actually kind of like wealthy. And she, was she married below her station when she married Dagwood Bumstead. Okay. <laughs> well, that, well, that's name. the idea. Oh, well, anyway... They were married, and they had um, Cookie, little and kids, Alex, and a, a little funny dog who Daisy. amazingly looked exactly like them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it happened. That, that, you guys don't know this. You ain't got no kids. <laughs> but it was such an incredible—not just an incredible resemblance. It was an, it's like a clone. Just like <laughs> that's what happens in the comics. Strip. Early cloning. Yes. And Mr. Dithers. Yeah. I always like that name, Mr. Dithers. <laughs> Who was the boss? Was um, Dagwood's boss? And it's like, um, in the in the the older ones, I know Dagwood was always had these fiascos that would happen to him. Things he would he would try to do something right, it would always go wrong. Which, oh, I guess that happens in a lot of sitcoms now. This <laughs> <laughs> was like I think that's possibly like why they're called sitcoms, sitcoms. You know, the situation happens and it's comedic. Yes, <laughs> the whole thing's just funny. Um, but, well, back then it was like Blondie would always figure out the way to make it make it go right. Yeah. yeah. So that, that That's was, a lot like life, isn't it? The guys screw it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now there was <laughs> there was also in the mid '70s, and I don't, don't I don't think it's listed in there. Was I'm sure there was some sort of Dagwood animated series. There I was. Remember, yeah. There was. there was. Was that part of that funny paper show? That was show? a part of that um, that Archie's funny Archie's. Archie's Sunday Funnies. Archie's mm -hmm. Sunday Funnies. There you it go. was a part of that. Which and I, we'll, we'll talk about that a little later, right. too. Like Archie and Broomhilda. There were, the there were just and... millions of things that were right. on there. It shows that I never even knew existed. Comics I never knew existed because, well, we just didn't get them here in Columbus. But oh. <laughs> well, I think there were comics that had been in any papers for about 20 years. <laughs> for over, over 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> That's I don't the know. Problem. I had... Broomhilda was in the paper where I lived. I think it was a Dayton paper. But the, so I was like real happy to see that on TV. Cats and Jammer Kids. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody had seen them since I've seen the old 30s or 40s. Yeah, that was the, yeah, the last appearance of the Cats and Jammer and Kids. Somewhere in the 30s. Smokey Stover. I, yeah. I had never no, heard of him. That one was like... I had never, ever heard of him. Way back in the old days. But, well, there's, there's Blondie. And then, um, let's see. Most irritating, most irritating comic book or comic strip show... To this day, I know he's grown up, but I'd still like to kill the child. Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis I, I have Dennis. this vision, you know, where he always goes, Hello, Mr. Wilson. I have this vision of Mr. Wilson getting out a shotgun and just blowing Dennis back across the fence. <laughs> Goodbye, <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> he was just an irritating child. I mean, and, yet, and, and yet, that was yet another uh, show that did the idea of, Oh, well, uh... Uh, an actor dies, we'll just drop somebody else in. And of course, they did actually explain it was his, his brother. brother. Yeah. The, uh, the other Mr. Wilson. We have the the original. Who is the original this Mr. Wilson? Joseph Kearns. Joseph Kearns. <laughs> and then the second Mr. Wilson. Gail Gordon. Gail Gordon, yeah. Gail Gordon. Later to become <laughs> Mr. Mooney. <laughs> well, the guy, that, the guy that played um, Dennis's father. He shows up on a lot of stuff. Uh, Dobie Gillis, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Herbert Anderson. They yeah. did, well, they did a lot of that back then. That crossover thing. Right, because you know, if you were kind of in the background in the show, you were not making that much money. So, <laughs> so it was like, well, I'll do a dozen shows, and I'll just be in the background of several neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> and this actually, they, and this is really an early example of this, is a crossover show. Because we found out that Dennis the Menace and Donna Reed live in the same neighborhood. Because there was an episode where Dennis drops by and Donna, Donna is like, what is she doing? Uh, she's she's uh, doing the house over. She's painting. And Dennis, and of course this is just like formula for disaster for Dennis. Everything's going wrong. So Donna calls up Mr. Wilson 
and gets Mr. Wilson to call him over and help him so that she'll leave, they'll leave the house. I think Dennis's parents were like test people for Valium because uh, yeah. I would have beat the hell out of that child. And you and watch. His mother's never, her hair was never messed up, her clothes was like, oh, that boy, oh, Dennis. I'd be like, and, Dennis, come here, we're going to yeah. talk. <laughs> you watch the show and it's quite obvious that, at least in the episodes that I've seen, is that Dennis is not this innocent little boy who doesn't know what he's doing. He's he knows scheming. exactly what he's Conniving. doing. <laughs> he's this evil little child <laughs> who just wants to make everyone else's life a living hell, especially Mr. Wilson. No, yeah. Mr. Wilson's his best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I At first, Mr. Wilson just used to crack me up because he just always looked all... Oh, oh good gravy. He just looked like the kind of person I that love was that easily to... Oh, good gravy, Dennis. What did you do? <laughs> but they did have a strange kind of little relationship, friendship kind of thing. You ever notice that? Well, I did. Mmm. <laughs> Actually, especially the first Mr. Wilson was a little bit effeminate, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't say that. Well, just a little bit. Not a lot. Not a lot, but just not a little me. bit. <laughs> and oh, letter. Yeah. Well, darn it, now we'll get letters. <laughs> <laughs> that little, Mark, little mailbag. Uh, he's dead. <laughs> he's <laughs> but he's dead now. But he's dead. <laughs> so, And he actually died on the show, which That's was right. a, an interesting concept, which is why they probably film things ahead now. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, oh, he moved away, but his brother bought the house. Bought the house. Wow. <laughs> and his brother, the writer, bought the house. Hey, it's just another Mr. Wilson to That's bug. Right. That's his right. His brother bought the house, but he bought the farm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So. And you, you thought, what kind of relationship do these brothers have? This one goes through hell with this little boy, and what's he do? He just sells the house to his <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he didn't really like him. Mom must have always liked him better. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and let me just say before we move on here that Blondie, yeah. um, the first, the first incarnation was in from '57 for. In '57, basically, yeah. and then they had another incarnation of it in '69. Well. In 68, it lasted from 68 to 69 with whole new people. And well, when, when was it on in 69? I'm just curious. Well, what time? at 68 to 69, it was um, on CBS on Thursday from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. So I was curious if they tried to do it really mod, because that's, right, you know. That, that is <laughs> just about she, in the mod you know, like era. The, ki the kids are, like, wearing bell bottoms and <laughs> doing the whole, Jim doing the whole mod Jim Backus thing. was Mr. Dithers in the news episode. Wow. And who here's a here's a Henny Backus? Oh my goodness, they must be related. Well, that was Cora <laughs> Dithers. <laughs> Mrs. Yeah, Cora, Mrs. Dithers. Well, maybe are they? Are they really? Probably. I don't know. He's dead now. <laughs> Isn't that a strange thing that happens? <laughs> Watching people in these shows, they just yeah. they just boom die like flies. <laughs> well, there's another show that I didn't realize was a comic. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh, oh, something oh. else here in this in this in this thing. Cookie in the in the sixty eight sixty nine version of Blondie. It was that darn Pamela Fern. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we can talk about that later. <laughs> now I'm upset. That darn Pamela <laughs> Fern. Darn Pamela Fern. <laughs> talk about a child that weasels her way into every show that was ever created. You know, if if they would have had a, a way to have a. Hey. She hey. was Lucy's voice on the uh, animated Peanuts. Yes, she was for quite a while there. It was that that darn Pamela Burton. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, my goodness. Let's, let's talk about Peanuts, as we mentioned. Uh, okay, why don't we? Since, what was uh, the first one, the Christmas one? Oh, yeah. Charlie what, Brown Christmas. Was the Christmas one yes. actually the first one? Yes, was first the, one. The Charlie Brown Christmas, I know for a fact, was the first one. Well, then... Um, it's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, had to follow like, oh, yeah. close it was, on its it heels second. like the next year. It was Yeah, that, they, they put that together right after they saw it was a big hit. But that... Which I think is the better the one. The first time that hit was probably... 65? Maybe even earlier. Really? No, it couldn't have been much earlier than that. Well, it was like Peanuts would have been 66. around well, since I the early 50s. Peanuts had been around for yeah. quite some time. But this I think by being on TV is what made that strip take off. Right. Because, I mean, you know, it's a pretty simple little strip, but then when it... It appealed, you know, TV-wise, right. it appealed to everybody. I think being on TV is what made that strip popular. Right, but but of, but of all the specials, there's no question that 
Charlie Brown Christmas has the coolest music. That's true. That's cool music, but I think The Great Pumpkin has a much better story. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and I always, I could never understand why this Great Pumpkin thing didn't take off. It did for a little while. Not truly. I, I mean, mean, you know, as a as an actual thing, it didn't. But no, I mean, why? But, why has it? I know what's going to happen. A million years from now, somebody's going to dig that up, look at it, and say, "Oh, wow." They had this wonderful old tradition of great pumpkining. Let's do it. Yeah, that's right. Future of course, if, if there are any pumpkins left by that time. Right. <laughs> oh, what's there a, will be. What's They'll a be pumpkin? great big, and yeah. people will live in them. Well, they'll that's be right. great pumpkins, so they won't have <laughs> to right. pretend. So it'll be even that more special. But this is, this is mind-expanding, boys and girls. <laughs> we're, we're thinking about the future, which wow. may never really happen. <laughs> But in your Peanuts thing, you've got, well, you've got Charlie Brown. Good grief. Uh -huh. Nothing ever goes right for Charlie Brown. That's right. He's just a little round-headed kid with a yeah. crinkly mouth and a little piece of hair here and a piece in the back <laughs> and, a, and a shirt that looks like his mouth does, yeah. <laughs> which they are selling, by the way. I've seen, I oh, saw yeah. one in a video one time. I saw somebody run up the street uh, earlier today. But right. you want to look like Charlie Brown. Brown. Oh, wouldn't it be scary if Phil Collins put one on? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Phil Collins looks like Charlie, Charlie Brown. Brown. Charlie Brown grown up. Yeah, just as looks much hair, too. Not even grown up, either. Just, just, just plain Charlie just Brown. That, that round head. <laughs> things you got just a round headed right. child. Get one of these shirts for him. <laughs> and his sister, his little sister, his little Sally. sister, Sally. Sally. Who, who was, um, I don't know. Like Sally's just learning quite a bit, but she seemed to know more than Charlie Brown, and yet she couldn't really put it into action. I think yeah. she wasn't as she was naive too, as Charlie Brown. Right. She was basically too busy being uh, 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 having, the having the crush on Linus. Linus, yeah. who was She's um, too darn busy with the that. Philosopher of the, the group philosopher who carried his blanket, his security blanket, with him, and he, he just seemed to know everything. The wise yeah. one, yes. And his sister, his sister Lucy, was Sad. just the crabby one. <laughs> <laughs> the crabby one who who just um, always wanted to butt into everything. Well, look at look at the baseball games. You know, obviously Lucy is the world's worst baseball player because she just doesn't care at all. But she wanted to be involved. So, and Charlie Brown is too darn wimpy to say you don't know how to play baseball. And yet, but not she's... not that he's an expert, but <laughs> well, he but he, he wants to be. She's got him on yeah, football. Yeah. Every She's time, every uh, darn time. He is a fool. Mm -hmm. He's just never yeah. learned yet. <laughs> He's always, She's always, no, if I try to kick the football, you'll move it away, and I'll fall down, and I'll break my head open or whatever. Right. He says. <laughs> no, Charlie Brown, not this time. This time, I'll sit there and hold it. You'll see. You'll see. She okay, lies. maybe oh. she will. Mr. Charlie Brown, Mr. Hope Springs Eternal. <laughs> yes. So he goes running back. He takes uh -huh. off. <laughs> She moves the football, whoa! <laughs> and it's just, he gets that little funny mouth like yeah. a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's an easy line for Charles Schultz to draw That's there. right. And then they had a, a little brother rerun. Rerun. But he, I don't think he's ever really appeared in the in I the, think he's yes, been on he some did. of the did newer he really? ones. He was, I think he was one of the, in one of the movies. All they, all they did basically was show him on the back of, his, of, of their mom's bike. And well, he's a he's taxi, actually, he's just kind of going like this. When they did it Saturday morning, he yeah. was in it. Okay, I knew because I saw it somewhere. Because he is one of like, the newer characters, and he's just right. like a smaller version of Linus, which right. is like, ooh, let's think up that one real yeah. hard. Yeah, <laughs> Linus with a bigger head. Yep. But there was a show that I never realized was a comic show. Oh, wait, 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 now we're not finished with the We're not. Thing. <laughs> well, I no, I mean, because uh, now Snoopy, we haven't mentioned Snoopy at all, who was... A dog. The, the dog that just had everything. Yeah. <laughs> Even he had Going a little Going to the dog <laughs> like parallel to Oscar's trash can. Yeah. <laughs> kinda. They they showed the inside of his house one time and it's the dog house one time and it's just modular furniture <laughs> and all this modern stuff, a great big stereo and you come back outside and it's just a doghouse. You look back inside. It's like uh, the uh, the TARDIS in yeah. the Doctor Who. Yeah. It's just more space That's what inside. it is. It's another TARDIS. Exactly. <laughs> and he used to fly around in it too, so yeah. maybe so. He's yeah. like a world war <laughs> one <laughs> flying <laughs> ape and then um Back in the space program, there was one, um, I don't remember which mission it was, but there was actually one mission where um, they they named the things after Snoopy. Right. And right. <laughs> Snoopy landed on the moon, they had, in time, fact. they had a Time magazine cover which had them in spacesuits. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a whole big thing there back in the late 60s, early 70s. And, which, hey, by the golly, that just fits our time frame. That's here. right. So, <laughs> and then there's Woodstock, the little bird, you know. There's Franklin, Peppermint Patty, and Patty, and 
Schroeder. Schroeder, yeah, Schroeder on the Who piano. Who provided all that cool music. <laughs> yeah, with, with just a small piano with no more than five or six yeah. keys on it. <laughs> but yet he could pull all kinds of music out of that thing. It hey, would have been crazy. I think, I think really Schroeder should really get some sort of like MIDI uh, keyboard or something <laughs> and just admit it, you know? I think he already had it. Yeah. So. It was early. Uh, yeah. Schroeder, he was pulling all the music out. His time. That's right. Out of that, out of that little key, out of that little piano of his. You never see him on like Modern Keyboardist magazine or something, you know. Schroeder. And and Lucy was just in love with him. And he right. couldn't stand her. Yeah. Because he knew she was the crabby one. <laughs> <laughs> no, she wasn't crabby. She was a fuss budget. And he was more interested was in term. his music than in anything. her. So she would yank that piano away from him, just like she would yank that football away from Charlie Brown. Because nobody liked her. Nobody liked she was her. A fuss budget. That was the proper. That was the term. That was her term, but she was just a crabby one. <laughs> she was pretty so crabby. okay, your your show that you didn't the realize show was that a I comic never show. really realized was a comic show uh, until later was Hazel, because the characters seemed so different. The character in the comic didn't seem to have as much personality. As Shirley Booth. <laughs> well, that's, that's I possible. So. I mean, in a comic, but you've I mean, just you got know, your two-dimensional you character. You have more dimensionality than the comic strip character. No, they just seem so different. <laughs> what a huge compliment. <laughs> <laughs> they seem so different where the kid, Jay North, playing Dennis, seemed just like the kid in the strip. Right. Well, they, they patterned him after. I mean, he, the, down to the hair coming out in the big... I wonder if his hair still does big, that. The big... The big... <laughs> Not the big butt, the big <laughs> slingshot that he carried around. Oh, still does that. It Wouldn't might. That be scary. Mm. No, it the, the alfalfa thing. Yeah. Of course, I didn't have the, the comic Hazel either until a lot later. Well, but I didn't realize that's one that, that they that just was... never had here either. Well, maybe they did, but. But you couldn't read. So I didn't read did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, it's not that I, I couldn't, it's that I didn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it. string could have saved him, but it came along too late. <laughs> yeah, was too, by then I was reading. So, well, there we are. But I had no. to do it all by myself. Well, I liked Hazel because <laughs> it was another situation where she was in everybody's business. But she was just such a nice person. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't Hazel the, uh, the, uh, like the, the prototype for Rosie? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. really. For Rosie. Yeah. Rosie of the Jetsons. <laughs> Hello, yep. Mr. J. One strip that did do a comic, or uh, one comic strip that did do a TV special, which I've only seen maybe once, and I think there's even somewhere out there a record album that went with it, was Doonesbury. Yes, that's right. Which I really like, Doonesbury. Doonesbury did do a special. Forever. There was a there was a Broadway show was a, that, that, that I know there was closed supposed almost to be a play. As, yeah, it did. It, it, it did, did actually happen. do it. Okay. It closed almost as quickly as it opened. It was in and out, boom. Well, that's because it was very satirical. So. And, well, if we're going to mention Broadway shows, there was also You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. That's right. Yeah. That traveled all over. I saw it here at Ohio State, in fact. And there was a definitely an album that went with that, too. It was interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. Well, speaking of fascinating, next time on the fascinating program, Vast Wasteland, we're going to talk about... The Munsters and the Atoms. It's Munsters versus the Atoms. Another one of our exciting versus shows. So you want to tune in for that. <laughs>